welcome. Quick video, if you're here because you're curious, great, thank you so much. If you're here because you're suspecting you've got Fusarium, I hope that what I'm about to show you will put your mind at rest, as opposed to the example of, I'm sorry, if you see what I'm about to show you, then yes, you have Fusarium. So let's have a look-see, all right? If your rhizome looks like this, that is not Fusarium. That is, the rhizome is darkened around the base and the color has leaked into the rhizome cut here. You can see it's brown. A big difference in comparison to this. The rhizome isn't as brown because it's newer and fresher, but you can see a tinge of purple in there. That is Fusarium. This is not Fusarium. Can you tell the difference? So if you're seeing this on the right, you're okay. If you're starting to see purpley tinges, then that's a problem. So let's take care of this right now. I'll show you how I apply Fison 20 to hopefully eradicate the spreading, not eradicate the fungus. Once it's in the orchid, it's in the orchid, but the spreading and possibly save her. So you will want 4.4 liters, which is an equivalent of one US gallon of water. In my case, it's reverse osmosis water because my mains water is so bad that I cannot do that to my orchids. I have to use reverse osmosis water. So just any clean water that you would normally use. One tablespoon, I'll put the equivalent up for Europe and the rest of the world with regards to quantities. One tablespoon of Faisan 20 into 4.4 liters or one US gallon of water. And you will want to soak your orchid in that for 20 minutes. So once you've done your Faisan soak, pot your orchid up according to what the root system is that you have available, whatever is left of it after the cleanup. I have one example here with roots that are pretty long. They were growing in the other pot prior to cleaning this orchid up and cutting into the rhizome and discovering Fusarium. So I have a semi-hydro setup, but I've put the orchid much lower in the pot to increase the humidity around the base. I also applied cinnamon to all the cuts. And here we have the roots still somewhat with plenty of air around them, plenty of humidity in the reservoir. And from now on, this piece will get quite a bit of calcium, magnesium and seaweed to be able to absorb it because it's got roots. In the case scenario that you only have a few root nubbins coming out the top, I always suspend the orchid above the media, hoping and encouraging the roots to go down into the media. So same setup here, also with a semi-hydro setup. But in this case, I'm just going to keep flushing with plain clean water because clearly the roots are nowhere near the media to absorb any kind of nutrients. However, I want to say if it comes to a follow-up video, I'm telling you how to work with Faisan and then pot up the orchid. I bashed the roots in the handling of the orchid. So there's no guarantee that these roots are even gonna progress. Any follow-up videos, if the roots have stopped growing, I want to really make it very, very clear that they will have stopped growing because I damaged them, not because of the treatment with the Faisan and not because of the setup. All right, so I'm hoping that they will continue to grow but if not, and we make any updates, that is the reason why I damaged the root tips, which is very, very unfortunate. The third example I have here is a piece with absolutely no roots whatsoever. We soaked it as well, treated the cuts with cinnamon, but it is now in a very, very humid environment at the base of the orchid, and that's how it's going to stay to avoid any kind of evaporation, dehydration from the transpiration through the leaves. There is no guarantee that this is going to work either, seeing as there are absolutely no roots to work with. We can only 
give it a go, test it out, and let's see if there's enough energy based on all the growths that it has for it to push out a tiny growth somewhere and another little root system. In my experience, when it comes to Brassavola crosses, once they've reached this stage, they deteriorate very, very quickly. I honestly hope that I'm wrong in this case. I would love to be very, very wrong. From here on in, if your orchid does have Fusarium, and we've come to this stage, you want to put it into good light, no direct sun, but you want it to have good light so that it can continue to photosynthesize, get those sugars going so that it can possibly increase with the root production. But absolutely no direct sun. Should it be in an area that gets very, very hot, get it out of that area as well. Keep it a little bit more on the intermediate cooler side. Anything and everything you can do to prevent the transpiration and dehydration through the leaves, that is the best practice from here on in. Having said that, I hope that you don't have Fusarium. I hope that it clarified seeing the two different rhizomes, what looks like Fusarium and what isn't Fusarium. And I hope that it turns out your orchid is Fusarium free. That was the point and exercise of this video. I hope that it was helpful. Also seeing the different ways of potting up an orchid. If you've got roots, if you've got absolutely no roots, and if you've got just a few little root nubbins coming, encouraging them to go down into the media. Any questions you might have, please, please leave them in the comments below. This is early days now. This is gonna take quite some time, but I will be updating sporadically in the coming months. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please, please stay safe and take care. Bye.